Hafidei Zan Mananasi Zuus. Thank you, everybody, for getting here so bright and early in the morning. <laughs> the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatnya Revitalization, Self Determination, and Regional Affairs now convenes this public hearing. Public hearing notices were distributed to the media and stakeholders. The first notice was issued on Thursday, August 8, 2019, and the second notice was on Tuesday, August 13, 2019. For the record, today is Thursday, August 15, 2019, and the time is now 8.08 in the morning. On the agenda for this morning's confirmation hearing are Athena C. G. Menno, to serve as a member on the Board of Trustees, Guam Educational Telecommunications Corporation, also known as KGTF or PBS. Darren J. Stinnett, to serve as a member on the Board of Commissioners for the Department of Parks and Rec, uh, Recreation, I should say its full name. Michael S. Rabagau, to serve as a member on the Board of Commissioners, also for the Department of Parks and Recreation and Patricia L. Kreitz to serve as a member on the Board of Directors for the Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities Agency. So it's a full morning. The committee will hear testimony from E. Magahaga's nominees as well as oral testimony from those wishing to testify. The committee will also accept written testimony that will be made part of today's public record. The conduct for this public hearing shall be as follows. Those testifying will be recognized in the order that appears on the sign-in sheet. Written testimony may be read. Lengthy written testimony should be summarized to about five minutes. Written testimony shall be submitted to the committee. Please provide our legislative staff with your written testimony for photocopying. Testimony shall be confined to the substance. Persons will be allowed to present oral testimony only once, and once you are done, you may be asked to remain in the room for questions or for additional testimony as may be desired by the members of the panel. When you speak, please make sure that the microphone is on and that you speak into the microphone. Please state your name clearly into the microphone for the record, and then kindly remember to turn the microphone off when you are done. We will now begin the confirmation hearing of E. Magahaga's nominee, Athena C. G. Menno, to serve as a member on the Board of Trustees, Guam Educational Telecommunications Corporation, also known as KGTF, or PBS. So, Ms. Menno, if you could go ahead and sit at the table. And then I want to remind those testifying that before you speak to make sure that the microphone is on, I see that you're right on that and that you clearly speak into the microphone and state your name for the record. So, uh, Ms. Menno. Thank good you so morning. much, uh, Senator Kelly March. I know. Um, good morning, half a day. Um, I am Athena Menno. Um, I've been a part of the PBS KGTF Guam. Um, uh, as a board member for the past seven years. Um, in those seven years, I've held the title of treasurer and secretary um, for several of those years. And um, PBS has seen me grown from just an undergraduate at the University of Guam to the fulfillment of that undergraduate with um, a degree in English literature, theater, and a minor in women gender studies. And um, I spent some time um, in the public and private sector. Thank you so much. Um, and I've returned back to the University of Guam to fulfill my master's in English. Um, during the past seven years, I've seen a lot of people come and go from PBS, but what has maintained a constant um, standard for PBS is its excellency in um, supporting the community and its um, perpetuation of cultural through um, broadcasting. Um, with my background in English and theater, um, I am a firm supporter of public programming, um, local broadcasting, and um, I hope to further support PBS um, through that um, by helping it uh, continue to be a staple in the community. Thank you. Sidhu Masi for your testimony. 
And as I look through your application and then hearing some of what you highlighted, um, I noticed that you graduated with honors. Um, hearing that you have gone back for your master's, uh, that's very, very good to hear as well. And so it really speaks, I think, to some of your dedication and um, your, your belief in excellence or pursuing things further. It's also mentioned in your application uh, some of your volunteerism, volunteerism. Um, and so I noticed that there's a, a certain amount of overlap in, in some of the volunteerism, and then you've definitely uh, outdone me in certain categories where you have volunteered for the recycling program, uh, Island Girl Power, um, the Guam History Day, and then you've also been a presenter at some of the conferences, including the, the conference put on by the Center for Island Sustainability. Yes. Yes. And then with the questions that I have, they're just a, a few minor questions. I think it speaks well that you've already been there for seven years and institutional knowledge can be extremely important understanding the, some of the journey that PBS has been on and uh, perhaps having some visions for the direction it could go in. So you mentioned some of the things that you're, you're interested in continuing to support, and that's the public programming and local broadcasting. Um, are there any thoughts that you have or visions that you have for further continuing their movement in that direction for local programming maybe, or maybe uh, having an opportunity to talk about some of the directions that the board has talked about at, as far as the public programming that you will be continuing to provide through PBS? Yeah, sure, of course, Ed. Um, our law a lot of our bar board meetings kind of revolve around like what ideas can we do in regarding like um, marketing, what can we as the board uh, further um, in that regard. I know for public broadcasting, a lot of us are like shooting ideas like, hey, this event is coming up and that event's coming up. We should probably get together and figure out how can we produce that. Um, I've uh, with the past GMs that we've had at PBS Guam, it's always been a big struggle in order to um, develop a channel just for local programming. And I know that for the first GM when I was there, a lot of it was maintenance. And so um, my vision of the course is to further that, um, to further the growth of the channel and um, to ensure that the broadcasting station can support several channels at once. There's actually going to be a requirement. Oh, sorry. Thank you, um, Senator, for joining us. Um, and to f further allow PBS to um, have the ability to support other channels. So on a national level, PBS, we're going to have to support another channel just for 24-7 uh, children's broadcasting. Um, and me as an individual, I would like to see um, more of our performances um, also being broadcasted. Yeah. So just Masi for that. And I did note that one of the things that you highlighted for our local broadcasting is that it's really this opportunity to help perpetuate the culture or to showcase or highlight it. So I think that's a very important role that PBS can be offering to our community. Uh, the more venues and, and just different means that we have of showcasing that, um, I think it's really important and especially important for our youth to be seeing that and have that sense of identity built, be built up. Um, I have heard, I don't know if PBS has finalized it, but I have heard that they're interested in expanding the Challenge Bowl to having an adult yes. Challenge Bowl. And so I, there's been some rumor, I don't know if you know this, uh, Senator Trulahi, but there's been some rumor Thanks, of Robbie. developing a legislative team. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so uh, we, we really appreciate that the board has been thinking about ways of expanding that local programming. Um, Certainly we as a community, uh, we're, we're very interested in more, more 
programming that helps us uh, see and support one another, be it through sports, our local football, our local basketball, volleyball, other sports, um, and, and through things like uh, getting to see each other. I know for years we've been watching Challenge Bowl uh, for the youth and uh, potentially now for the adults. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, Also, since you've been there for seven years, have you um, ever come across an instance where you have some conflict of interest? Uh, and if so, or, or do you see any potential for conflict of interest? Uh, presently, no. In the past seven years, I haven't really been invested in any businesses or um, any conflict of interest at all. Uh, should any of those arise, I would just stop my business altogether um, just because my positionality is with PBS and it has consistently been with PBS. So just Masi for that and um, I want to thank you for uh, continuing to serve our community through PBS and for accepting the nomination of Imagahaga to continue that service. So I do want to note that Senator Therese Terlahi has joined us this morning, and Sidious Maasi for that, uh, Senator. I know we started very early this, uh, this morning. Um, did you have any thoughts or comments that you wanted to express? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just to say thank you again for your, your long service and your continued willingness to do that. And I was curious because I saw on your packet, I'm sorry if I missed it, traffic was so bad. Yeah. But the, uh, uh, it says you made a presentation at the, the sustainability conference. Yes. What was that about? Um, so the sustainability conference is actually a part of a class that I fulfilled last semester. Oh. And um, it was, what it did, it was me and several other students were kind of moving forward saying about how um, our culture um, kind of like a growing of um, our gardens of our, our homes uh, through our grandmothers and how um, through storytelling, through oral histories and by sharing these stories that we're able to um, find ourselves and find our voice. Yeah. I, I, thank you. I, I support you in, in what I caught on my way in about uh, you wanting to put on uh, or broadcast uh, more farther, right? Yeah. The uh, performances that we are having on Guam and, and a lot of those. I think in the past that that was done and I remember watching some of the plays I had gone to then on TV and uh, recently, uh, I can't get this one example out of my head because I went to, uh, it was like Mess Chamorro and I went to one of the schools and the fifth grade class, so every class does a, a program, but the fifth grade put on an actual skit that I thought was so good. And all I could think of is, oh, I wish I could get them to the museum and bring all the Manamku in to see this one skit. It was just so empowering. And um, so, yes, I, I support you in that. And if there's any impediment, please let us know. At, um, so we look forward to I, We've seen the changes at PBS, so I want to congratulate them also. But uh, thank you for your service. Thank you so much. So just Masi for that, Senator. And uh, building on what Senator Terlahi has brought up with that presentation and that class that you've taken on sustainability, um, hopefully that is something that can be continued to be brought out through PBS. Um, there's so much happening in the world today and we're really seeing a lot of information about the plastic that's building up in our oceans, uh, that's washing up on our shores, uh, things like that. And so maybe for a lot of us, it's really bringing to home that we all need to be stewards of the island and so forth. Um, has there been any discussion as to having programs that revolve around sustainability that you're aware of? Or are you interested in pursuing those? Um, definitely. I don't believe that We've had a discussion about sustainability, but I've had a lot of experience working with iRecycle and um, continuing to recycle on our island. Um, a lot of the uh, difficulty is finding um, uh, individuals who are interested in providing that kind of service, but it's definitely something that we could work on for the future just to uh, further that agenda, yes. 
So just Masi for that. And I think you really bring that to the table. If you've taken a course in that, if you've presented on that, that that's something, uh, should you or PBS be interested in pursuing that, that's something that you can really bring there and really uh, be part of guiding your involvement in recycling, even just on your own, I think really speaks to your commitment to those sort of issues. And, um, you know, there is an opportunity, perhaps through PBS, to help the island um, tackle some of these issues that both Senator Terlahi and I have been, been working on or been part of here, and that's to tackle some of those illegal dumping issues um, and uh, get people on board with uh, zero waste, which means having to recycle. And, and again, it fits into that concept of being good stewards of our island. And so um, I'd really like to promote that for PBS, if there's any way to add that in. Uh, there may be ways, especially if we're bringing people along and we're bringing them to sites or we're having them see cleanup efforts or having them really hear from people who are dedicated to this and why it's so important for all of us. Part of what we talked about is that it really needs to be a change of behavior and a change of mindset, at least for some of us. Some of us are committed to it, but obviously there's a certain percentage for a variety of reasons um, who aren't understanding why it's so important. And so PBS could be a really good vehicle for uh, reaching out and starting those behaviors early with our youth. Uh, I've heard that they really want to build up the youth program in as well. Did you have any further comments or questions? So uh, if, did you have any last uh, comment that you wanted to provide, Ms. Menno, or? Oh, no, that's all. Thank you. Okay. So, Sidhuus Maasi, for being here this morning. Uh, we really appreciate your dedication and what you've been doing on your own in your volunteerism, but then also what you've been pursuing at the University of Guam. Um, we just, or uh, I, I look through your application and I think that you have a lot to offer. So, Sudzus Masi again for accepting the nomination. Sudzus Masi. Yes. So, what we will do um, is the committee will continue to receive testimonies for the next few days. Please address your written testimony to the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, and Guam Products. Hagatnya Revitalization, Self-Determination, and Regional Affairs, and submit it via email to office.senatorkelly at guamlegislature.org or to my office located at the second floor on the Guam Congress building. Um, the time is 8.25. What we'll do is we'll take a few minutes recess before we start the next uh, confirmation hearing.
Hafadez and Manana Sidzu is again. Uh, we will now begin the confirmation hearing of E. Magahaga's nominee, Darren J. Stinnett, to serve as a member on the Board of Commissioners of the Department of Parks and Recreation. So again, to restate the committee's general housekeeping rules, the conduct of this public hearing shall be as follows. Those testifying shall be recognized in the order of the sign-up sheet. Written testimony may be read. Lengthy written testimony should be summarized to about five minutes. Written testimony shall be submitted to the committee. Please provide our legislative staff with your written testimony for photocopy. Testimony shall be confined to the substance. Persons will be allowed to present oral testimony only once. Once you are done, please remain at the table so that the members of the panel are able to request for additional comments or convey comments on your testimony. When you speak, please make sure that the microphone is on and that you speak into the microphone. And then please state your name for the record. So this morning, we have Darren Sinet, if you could go ahead and sit up. We'll probably save your testimony for, uh, for after other testimony. We have the director for the Department of Parks and Recreation, Richard Ibanez. Are you providing testimony? You're just here in support. So just Maasi for being here in support. And then for uh, Ray Suba, um, are you, are you here to provide testimony or is it for, I know we have four people here today, so are you here for Ms. Stinnett? Okay, so if, uh, are you providing testimony or just support? Okay, so if you could go ahead and come up. And Sidus Masi. Thank you, everybody, for, for being here. So we'll go ahead and um, hear those that are providing support. Um, I guess we'll begin maybe from the left to the right, uh, just to make it clear. or. Let's see, I see Officer Kim Santos is here, and then is it Ken, sorry if I'm having trouble reading the last name. Oh, Kevin Guerrero. Okay, Guerrero. Okay, so um, we can go ahead and follow the sign-in sheet then. We'll start with uh, Mr. Suba. Good morning, Madam uh, Chair. Leche, very loud. That woke me up. And uh, good Senator Terlai. I just want to say thank you for uh, allowing me to come and give uh, support testimony for a fine young lady. I've known uh, Mrs. Stinnett since she was a child and uh, watched her grow up and have been very, uh, I would say, very proud and amazed at her uh, contributions to not only her school and her community, but a great reputation. Uh, that she's built uh, because of her family upbringing. I know her parents and they're very wonderful people. Her mom has stayed by her side and brought her up uh, really well. And so I've seen that this young lady has contributed in many ways, uh, particularly in the, in the area of sports. And she is very competent, committed, and dedicated to um, not only the, the uh, sport itself, basketball and volleyball, but to the teams that she's played with and uh, to their families and friends. I think that she will uh, be an asset, Mr. Director, uh, not only to the board and its members and to the agency, but <clears throat> for what the agency stands for. Uh, because uh, the one thing that we see on this island is a rise in crime, and the crime rate is due to so many things, many of them related to the drug epidemic that we've seen not only here but throughout the nation and elsewhere. But I think that someone uh, with her caliber uh, and character and her passion to help people uh, develop uh, 
the recreational facilities and the activities that are here on this island that have not been really addressed in, in a long time. And it's good to see someone uh, with her uh, youthful uh, mind and, and passion to see things get done. And so I just wanted to say and, and make it really actually simple that I do absolutely support her uh, being appointed and confirmed uh, to this important uh, administration, uh, you know, for the, the safety and the good of the youth on this island. So thank you. Sidus Masi, you brought forward many important points, and we will definitely be following those up when we uh, hear from everybody. Next, uh, we'll go ahead and hear from uh, Officer Santos, if you'd like to go ahead and begin. Yes. Good morning, Senator Chalahi and Madam Chair. Thank you for having us here. Um, well, I, I am Darren's mother. And um, last night when I went home, I sat to actually start to write testimony that I could read off. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to write some of her strong points. I'm not here because every mother wants to talk about all the best, you know, traits of their, their children, right? So I'm going to try to make this real short and be straight to the point. Um, from the time Darren was a toddler through elementary school, junior high and high school on through adulthood, and into her marriage. She is presently married to William Stinnett. Uh, he's sitting back here, a fine young man that she married. Um, Darren has shown the following characteristics, always, from when you could first see those indications uh, when your children are, are small. She, she has shown the following characteristics, traits, and values. And I will stand by these and give you my word that they are true. She is intelligent. <coughs> hardworking, selfless, determined, and headstrong. Boy, can I say headstrong. Um, she's self-disciplined. She's very loyal. She's wise. And she's balanced. You know, being, uh, I want to share a quick story. And this is an example of her character. Um, I've gone to so many of her games. I mean, from the time she was in junior high school on, uh, through to uh, she plays basketball for Guam's national team. I'm, I was always very supportive, but I can remember, and she's traveled oftentimes to play basketball and to represent Guam, which is also an honorable thing. But I can remember when she told me she was going to go to Turkmenistan. And being a police officer and being very concerned about her safety, a police officer and a mother more than anything, I was very concerned about her safety. And I remember going to their home and I said, you know, Darren, you've, you, you should really think about it. You know, this is just, these are just games, you know? You, I'm, I'm very concerned about your safety in that part of the, re, uh, the world. And um, I shared some of my concern and I could see the look on her face. Oh my goodness, you know? And she goes, oh, mom, I'll think about it. I went back the next day. She was supposed to, to leave the following day. And uh, I said, are you still going? And she basically looked me in the eyes and said, Mom, I thought about what you said, but I made a commitment and, and I can't back out now. I have to be there. And, and there's, I'm just, I'm going no matter what. But um, I'm very proud of her. She has worked hard. She's a hard worker. I would come home, uh, you know, she would go to, when she was in high school, she would go to basketball practices after school, two, three hours a day at St. Paul's, come home, and the first thing she would do is clean. She's a kind of a, a clean freak. She would clean, and then she would sit and do exercises, and then she would do her homework, and she was a straight-A student. And all I thought to myself was, this kid has a lot of self-discipline. Where did she get it? And um, I'm here to support her, not only because I'm, a, I'm her mother, but because I care about Guam, and I think she will make a difference. Thank you. Sujus Maasi for your testimony, Officer Santos. And now, uh, having read through the application, 
her degree in criminal justice completely makes sense. <laughs> I see where that interest comes from. And then if we can also move on to uh, Mr. Is it Guerrero? And then we'll go ahead and have uh, perhaps some questions and some comments. Good morning, Madam Chair, Senator Tulali. My name is uh, Lieutenant Kevin R. Guerrero. I am the staff duty officer for the Guam Police. And I'm here to uh, provide oral testimony on behalf of Darren Stinnett. Uh, I've known Darren for over 25 years. Uh, I can attest to her character and based on what they've said about her, I, I second that. She's uh, hardworking, very involved in sports. Uh, I've seen her grow up, very intelligent, and I think the, the knowledge she has in sports would benefit the Parks and Recs because she can see firsthand and what needs to be done. She, o she also can assist uh, the director and giving guidance on how to make the kids get involved in sports. I think sports can change a lot of things in the community. And, and, and I see it firsthand because when she was in the sports, a lot of times she got involved and kept, kept her out of trouble. When you see kids stay idle, you know, they tend to get into a mischief. And sports is a big thing on the island. We just need to provide more funding to parks and recs to uh, fix the parks and get more community involved in sports. Sports has been involved for the longest time since I've known her. Now she's in the national team. She's still representing Guam, and I think she'll be a fine representative to be in the, the board. That's it, I mean. She's a good lady. This is my first time I woke up this morning to come here support her. So <laughs> I just got off. <laughs> okay. So just Maasi, I yes. think that really speaks to uh, your commitment to coming here and providing that support. And then the points that you highlighted were very important to hear. So yes. this is Masi for your testimony. And then let's go ahead and hear from Mrs. Stinnett herself. Good morning, Senators. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Darren Stinnett. I am 28 years old from the village of Mung Mung. I was born and raised here on Guam, and I am extremely proud to call our beautiful island home. I am humbled by this opportunity to make a difference in our community through volunteering my time on the Board of Commissioners for the Department of Parks and Recreation. I received my high school diploma from St. Paul Christian School and my bachelor's degree in criminal justice from the University of Guam. I am currently employed at Docomo Pacific as a senior account executive in the Enterprise Sales Department. I have an extensive background in the local sports community, mainly with the Guam Basketball Confederation as a player for the women's national basketball team for over 10 years, representing our island in many local and international competitions. I currently serve as a player representative on the, board, on the Guam Basketball Confederation's board. In addition, I serve as secretary for the local nonprofit organization, Micronesian Sports Foundation, whose mission is to provide youth, both youth and adult community members opportunities to be involved in various sports programs. We have been in operation since 2013 and have successfully ran over 50 sports leagues, youth programs, and community outreach, outreach events here on island. I am also a coach for the middle school girls basketball team at the St. Paul Christian School. Through my involvement in sports over the years, I've experienced firsthand how being involved in team sports positively impacts an individual by teaching us valuable life lessons such as commitment, teamwork, and work ethic while also providing an alternative outlet to delinquent behavior and bad influences from peers. Paired with my experience in sports as an athlete and program coordinator, I have a lot to offer this board through the many relationships I have established in my professional career, which I believe would help be helpful in perpetuating local business and government partnerships to enhance our public recreational facilities and community involvement. I look forward to working with the members of the board Mr. Ibanez, and local business partners to improve our island's public recreational facilities and create more programs and opportunities for our community. Thank you very much. So, Joyce Masi, for your testimony, um, it adds very nicely to your application packet uh, for us to, uh, to more fully understand all of your involvement. I'll go ahead and let uh, Senator Terlahi provide some comments and possibly some questions. Thank you, um, thank you, Mrs. Tanet, for uh, being willing to be on this board in addition to all the other uh, activities that you are presently involved in. 
your, your mother didn't have to say it because we just read all the things that you're doing. Just being on the national team by itself, we know you are self-disciplined uh, and, and that you have done that throughout your career. Your schooling is, is very admirable. So I, I appreciate that all that uh, dedication that you've put into all the different, and I'm very interested in, your, in this uh, Micronesian Sports Foundation. Forgive me, I'm not that familiar with it, but who are the other officers of that? You're the uh, secretary right now. Yes, so uh, my husband is the uh, president okay. of the board, and uh, our vice president is Sevi Susuiko, who is also another member of the National Guam men's basketball team. Yes. Okay, great. Um, yeah, the, the activities that you discussed about them doing, and, and actually all your experience, and even your criminal justice degree. I used to teach up at UOG in that department, but um, I'm thinking all of it really does, it's going to add to this board. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that, that you're willing to do this. Um, the board has, it's quite unique, I think. You know, Department of Parks and Recs is always treated like a line agency, yet they have a board that really, um, you know, is, between them and the legislature. So for example, one of the duties of the board, member that I wanted to just uh, bring to your attention is uh, hiring the director, right? So the director for Parks and Rec doesn't come to the legislature for uh, confirmation. It's going to be the board who hires and fires or it's totally at your discretion. So are you willing to take on that responsibility? And Yes, definitely. All right, and um, the safety of the parks have been a big, big issue, right? Um, everybody knows this, and of course the activity, sorry, the, um, the availability of activity, recreation for the children, that's I think an issue that, that's been longstanding, but this park safety issue is really a, a almost more dire right now, and I think uh, Chief Suba can attest to this because uh, they've, you know, actually, GVB has a role, Parks and Rec has a role, mayors have a role, and uh, everybody has a role. And there are even proposals to privatize parks because they don't have much faith in Parks and Rec being able to take care of these parks. But I want to challenge you to um, please uh, prove that, that's, that we can do that. And I know Parks and Rec has had a boost of uh, some... some uh, grant money that they can do some repair and but really it's the safety I think you know once we repair the government has really not been that delinquent in repairing although it's it because things have been damaged almost you know repeatedly repeatedly and continuously and so but I think that uh, with your experience maybe you're going to be able to come up with a solution for that that is that, is con that continues to allow accessibility to the parks because that's what we're trading off, right? A lot of the mayors tell me they're just going to fence it off. They're going to lock it up. And that's, uh, that's one way to handle it, but it's not, it's not going to do the other side of your job, which is to encourage you know, recreation. And uh, our beaches already are so limited. Access to beaches are very limited on Guam right now. And so... The more access we can provide that is safe. And, and um, I'm sure as a woman that you can appreciate things have changed probably even as you've grown up. For sure, as I've grown up, access to beaches is completely different now for, for us. We don't go where we used to go. We don't go, you know, even alone or even with another person sometimes. You need a whole group because just to keep yourself safe. So all of those things have changed the way we're able to enjoy Guam. And so... I know that you appreciate all of those things, and I'm just, I just want to put that on the record that, that I'm looking to you. I'm hoping that you're going to push this board and push the department to, to really um, make that a priority, right? We can be proud, I think, of, of what we can do. <clears throat> the other thing that the, the Department of Parks and Recreation is responsible for right now is this uh, historic preservation. So some of our, you know, parks are beaches and different things, but many of our parks are historic properties, historic places, and uh, we've put a, a lot of investment into trying to, you know, protect those, protect our culture, keep a place for people to enjoy that, and, uh, but there's a million more things to do in that regard. Yeah. 
I'm sure you've heard of people. Artifacts are being picked up every day. And, um, but one of the responsibilities of this board is, is to, well, we, we've got the whole Historic Resources Division in the Department of Parks and Rec. So I hope that you can um, do what it takes to get up to speed in that regard and to make sure that um, we are as critical as we can be as to what our role is. Um, you know, sometimes we've criticized companies, private companies, or even recently, you know, the military for what they have uh, done to cultural sites. And they turn around and want to say, well, what have you done to your cultural sites? And so, um, of course, we have to, we have to, we will always have that challenge, right? So we have to do our part. And, but uh, we are all relying on Parks and Rec in this regard. And the, the State Historic Preservation Officer up at Parks and Rec has a very unique role. In many, many instances, they are the only people or only person who is, has access to information, has access to these sites that I'm sure you can check all the manamco you know. They've never had that privilege to go to a lot of these places and, and appreciate that uh, these Lati sites, for example, are still intact and that uh, what they really represent to you know, and so uh, I'm, I'm also looking to you to, to make sure that those types of things, uh, that, that has to be our priority right now. Somebody was uh, talking to me the other day about all the rain that we're having and the flooding and uh, how that makes all these historic places also very vulnerable to, you know, being washed away um, and permanently damaged or, you know, lost. Uh, so we're, we're, we've got a huge challenge. You've got nature, you've mother nature, and you've got, you know, crime, and we've got uh, the, the other challenges that our youth face and um, historic preservation, lots of things. So I just, but I, I'm very confident, and uh, I want to congratulate you on being on the, the women's team and your performance in the, the South Pacific Games. And, Thank you very and, much. And, uh, and, and wish you the best. And if there's anything that I can, we can do to help you, please, you know, don't take no for an answer. Don't take, uh, this is the way it's always been done. Please don't take that. I want that to be the number one rule that that's not what you're going to accept because I think we can really show that Guam, we can do these things and we have to work together. So I, I, know, I know that you've said that in your testimony, so I appreciate that also. If, if I may add, you know, I had the privilege of being in one of your classes up at UOG and that's really something I took away from your classes. Never take no for an answer, especially being a woman. So I appreciate that and thank you for everything. Sujus Masi, Senator Trelahi, you brought forward just a, a lot of really important points about um, the potential of you as a nominee and then the potential of our parks and all the efforts that, it, it, that we really need to take as a community to safeguard them, to promote them, uh, and to be utilizing them. And um, I really like that you highlighted that we as a community can do this. Uh, sometimes I think being very humble as part of our nature, maybe we also don't always uh, recognize our capabilities or we're looking to sort of complement or support uh, others, um, which can be a, a, a trait that you find in Pacific Island communities, but you know, we really, we really have so much talent. We really have so many people that are willing to volunteer, such as yourself. Your, your list is quite lengthy, and so I think that speaks to your understanding the commitment it involves. You've had many years of experience of volunteerism, and um, your ability to perhaps coordinate and see some overlap between these organizations, like the uh, Micronesian Sports Foundation, uh, there are maybe ways that that or the national basketball team for the women that that can be uh, brought in to partner up or network with the Department of Parks and Rec. And so I think that those are definitely some, some opportunities that you bring with you. I, I do want to point out since you've been, and I was quite impressed, uh, part of the women's national basketball team for 10 years, yes. uh, correct? 
And so uh, just yesterday, I don't remember why, but um, I had uh, sort of lightheartedly said that we should create a, a ladies' leecher, a basketball team. I don't know if you heard that, <laughs> Senator Durlaki. So apparently we're getting um, pulled in different directions, uh, academic challenge bowl team. Uh, <laughs> but um, if we do go in that direction, I, I know who I can call upon. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> oh, wonderful. And like I said, your volunteerism um, has been quite extensive, and so I really think that speaks to your ability to be such a, a contributing person to this board. Uh, one of the issues that we've had for many years across many boards is getting quorum, and so um, it, it looks like you have that commitment of understanding the importance of being part of a board and then making sure that quorum excuse me, quorum is there so that uh, business can be conducted. Yes. And looking to your background, <clears throat> some of what we're working with, so we're very fortunate, the Department of Parks and Recreation has about $5.6 million to upgrade a lot of its facilities, including some of our sports mm -hmm. facilities and other facilities. And part of that is also uh, set aside <clears throat> for putting in some security cameras. And so I think this is some of what you'll be able to offer is understanding issues like security cameras. Uh, there are some partnerships with uh, the Department of, of um, the Police to set up se other security cameras as well. And so I think that that will be something that you can help address as well as the other safety issues there. We do want our families and individuals to feel safe when they go to the parks. Yes. And uh, as we've mentioned, or at least as, as I mentioned earlier um, in one of the other nominations, that a lot of what we're seeing for damage to our public facilities or I issues like illegal dumping or littering, that these, a lot of it really is behavioral issues. And so uh, with your criminal justice background, with your volunteerism and other elements, um, hopefully as a board member, you would really be able to help tackle some of those issues and, and think through or develop a subcommittee, whatever needs to be done to help them tackle those issues and, and get the community on board with really appreciating and, and taking mm -hmm. care of our resources. Yes. They are important to us. They're Definitely. where we have uh, family time, where we celebrate our birthdays and, and so forth. Yes. Um, let's see, with, with all of the commitments that you do have, so on one hand I mentioned that it's very positive because you, it shows that you understand the commitment involved. Do you see that there would be any issue in being able to keep up with this, this board as well on top of your other commitments? No issue is at all. And you know, I've taken everything you guys have said to heart and I, I hope and I'm excited to work on this board. Sijuus um, Maasi. And I already mentioned the overlap that you have between the, uh, some of the groups that you, that you are part of. So I think we've covered a lot of the issues. Um, Again, I think you have a lot of potential to help resolve some of those issues, and I think you're just an example of one of our community members that really brings a lot to the table, really cares about our island, and cares about making a difference. Yes. So if there are no further comments or questions. So the committee will conclude the confirmation hearing of Darren J. Stinnett to serve as a member on the Board of Commissioners, Department of Parks and Recreation. The committee will continue to receive testimonies for the next few days. Please address your written testimony to the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatnya Revitalization, Self-Determination, and Regional Affairs and submit it via email to office.senatorkelly at guamlegislature.org or 
you may hand deliver it or otherwise deliver it to the office uh, of myself located at the second floor of the Guam Congress building. The time is now 9.02 uh, and a half, if we're going to be super exact. Um, but uh, I, I, I think we're doing a good job of staying on track. I want to say to all of you for, for braving the traffic, especially on a rainy day and coming in so early in the morning. Um, thank you for your testimony. It was very helpful to hear. And then we'll go ahead and move on to the next the next nominee, which will be um, Dr. Michael Rabigal. You can help me with the Thank pronunciation so I'll get Thank it better. You. Half a day. <laughs> Half a day. So if, could you please uh, let us know how to pronounce your last name so I can try and get it close? Rabagu. Rabagu. Yes. Okay. I will work on that. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we will now begin the confirmation hearing of E. Magahaga's nominee, Michael S. Rabagu, to serve as a member on the Board of Commissioners also for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Again, to restate the committee's general housekeeping rules, uh, the conduct of this public hearing shall be as follows. Those testifying will be recognized in the order of uh, how they have signed in. Written testimony may be read. Lengthy written testimony should be summarized to about five minutes. Written testimony shall be submitted to the committee. And please provide our legislative staff with writ the written testimony for photocopying. Testimony shall be confined to the substance. Persons will be allowed to present oral testimony only once. Once you were done, please remain at the table so that the members of the panel are able to request for additional comments or convey comments on your testimony. When you speak, please make sure that the microphone is on and that you speak into the microphone. Please state your name for the record. Dr. Michael Robigo. So if you could go ahead and begin with your testimony, uh, Dr. Rabago. <laughs> uh, good morning. My name is uh, Dr. Michael Rabago. I am uh, from the village of Santa Rita. Um, basically, I have an extensive background with uh, sports. And uh, my actually, my first major is in... Uh, PE, Health, Recreation, and Dance. My master's is in ed, uh, Educational Technology. And then my uh, Educational Doctorate is in Teaching and Learning. Um, and how everything just all arised was um, I took a program uh, two years ago. Uh, I did it through the United States Olympic Committee. And I was, um, I am a 10th year alumni from the program called ICECP, so it's an international coaching certification enrichment program. And uh, I was basically exposed to grassroots of sports to uh, the Olympic level. So that kind of opened up the doors uh, for, for this uh, type of involvement. Uh, as a matter of fact, I had to do a project uh, with Guam and within six months I had to take my project and defend it down in Switzerland. So one of the highlights that I uh, encountered was that um, it takes a community to build a program. So a lot of my uh, counterparts uh, did mention that within their towns, villages, community, they always they always had a program. So um, I brought that back home and it was just so interesting that uh, eight months later I was invited down to Fiji for a program called Long-Term Athlete Development. So as I was driving along uh, Fiji, I noticed that every park, 
uh, a long Fiji had some type of event for their youth. And it's not just the youth, but it's for the, the, the adults as well in the community. Uh, Long-term athlete development is a, is a program that's instilled and was established by Canada, but it's instilled in a lot of these countries that buy in. And what it is is just to reduce uh, the obesity rate. So it, there, there's two parts to it. One way you can build an athlete from grassroots, or if this athlete kind of veers away and is not going to be a representative of the uh, Olympic team, then the, the benefit of that is in this long-term athlete development is that you're reducing your chances of um, chronic diseases, cancer, and obesity. Um, but overall, where, where do you instill this program? So the programs has to run through Obviously, for Guam, would be running through our villages uh, or our schools. And when this opportunity came up, I thought I'd just um, put in the application and see what would happen from there. I didn't really expect too much. I mean, I, I didn't know how many people were going to put in for this, but uh, it, it's an honor to be here today just to uh, sit in this environment of, uh, you know, where laws are made and everything. So, you know... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> Sidious Masi, for your testimony, um, I think that what you've outlined thus far really shows how much you can bring to that board in areas where we really need it. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and see if uh, Senator Terlahi would like to make comments or questions. Um. Dr. Rabago, <laughs> this is a very um, impressive resume. Con congratulations you, on the nomination and uh, thank you for being willing to, to serve in this role. I think uh, it's a great addition to the board. Um, yeah, you, you're very humble. You didn't state, but your, your resume shows that you have received m many military awards and decorations, that you're very active in, in sports communities for many, many years, and uh, in leadership also. And, and I, d I wasn't aware that you were teaching at Inarahan right now, so you're the teacher and you're the, the athletic director down there. Yes, actually, ma'am, I've been tasked to the uh, 736 Security Forces uh, up at Northwest Field, so I've been on orders for since uh, sep September as of last year, so I've been put on orders for a whole year, so it, it, it's a schoolhouse for cops, so the teaching is there. It's just the tone of voice is a little bit different. <laughs> Are you teaching? Uh, well, I, I do uh, some courses. I do like familiar, familiarization courses with vehicles and, and logistical parts there. Oh, okay. But I, on the other side, after hours, I, I do coach at a Notre Dame High School. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I, I still continue with the men's national volleyball program. Yes. Okay, so um, that keeps you very busy. I'm yes, it does. But I have a supporting wife and family that understands that my roles are beneficial to them because they're, they're mostly involved. So if I travel, I try and get them involved mm -hmm. to go with us. And uh, in return, it, it's, it keeps my kids active and they see what... I can do, and then if I plan everything out well, then it works out well. I was wondering because uh, I saw, you know, I kind of started at the back of the resume, so I saw that you were published before I saw that you had a PhD, and so I was like, wow, <laughs> this gets published. But so I'm really glad that you had the opportunity to see in Fiji and have that experience, uh, Switzerland also, and just yeah. all over the world, it looks yes. like, according to this, but uh, that that you've been able to see it. I hope that you also believe that that's what we can do here. Yeah, well, uh, I didn't mean to cheat, but when you guys said uh, preservation of the historical parts, that's probably one thing that never crossed my mind. And I started to think, how, how can we help that out? So, you know, if I guess maybe if we start out with the community uh, sports-wise and, and we kind of share and preserve, right, like certain clubs can take care of this one area and then, that's kind of one way I was just thinking. So, you know, I know that's a, a big factor there. That's great. 
Um, I appreciate that, and I hope that you will continue to do that. So yes, so one of the roles of the board member is going to be the, it's going to be what, you know, what we do for directors, we vet them here, but that's going to be your role for the director of the Department of Parks and Rec. Could, yes, ma'am. Are you willing to do that? Yes, ma'am. All right, sometimes it's hard on Guam because we're all friends. Yes, it is, but uh, that's where our friends have to understand. Yes. Business is business, and then after that, well, we can... Right. still be friends right. <laughs> and then um of course so you mentioned the historic uh park the parks uh division um historic resources division at the parks yeah i hope that you can uh learn all you can about it and see i'm sure you'll find a way that you can you can help them i think they're they're so busy kind of overwhelmed overworked and uh have a very small staff so of course we need to do our end at uh, shoring that up but I also think uh, one of the things that they could really use is uh, getting info out to the public, right? Yes, I yes. just feel like it, for a long time, it's been very, uh, uh, some people know how to get the info. Some people uh, are part of like the, you know, archeology span community. So of course it's, that's uh, run of the mill for them. But for people like us, I mean, I'm, all my family members, everyone, all my friends, they all want to know. The more they know, the more they love to know, right? Yes. And I just feel like that's the type of thing that right now we could really use. We could use knowing everything there is to know, for example, about IPAO. You know, IPAO, I think we forget that if we're not there at the time when the, this, you know, they were doing the archaeology down there and, you know, all the news about it, this, this next generation, hasn't heard know. about it at all and so just it's keeping that you know perpetuating the knowledge and reminding ourselves of these things and and then building upon it right yes. what 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 does that mean for us now and I'm, I'm hoping you seem like a creative guy and that you're gonna think of a way to get help us do that part of it yes we're gonna try yeah and you have a lot of connections in the community so that's great also but i i just know that uh even I remember uh, when Angel Santos was, um, before he became a senator and he was very active, he used to, it, it wasn't even his, he, he, you know, they would, he would organize people to get information out, right? So they would talk about lands, all kinds of things, but one of their tactics was to go to all the intersections and pass out uh, information. So then they'd take it home, they'd read it, and, and I remember an, o an older woman telling me, I love this man because he's telling me things that I've never heard. But those were absolutely things just in the history of Guam that some people know, but we need to keep sharing that. Yes. It's just like the challenge. I'm glad to see Dr. Kreis here. It's the challenge of UOG also, right? We've got all this knowledge up there, but it's getting it out to the community. And, and if we're going to perpetuate a culture, every single person on Guam has to know about it. So the more they know, the better. So I hope you can help. That's my, that's well, my. Well, I, I know physical, I can, uh, cultural dance leads to physical activity. So I'm sure there's yes. some way we can combine that with uh, all the villages. Yes, I think that's a good idea. And they've tried to do that with language and the cultural dance yes. and, and, and then uh, artifacts, things like that, right? They try to incorporate their, their outfits to be like, uh, accurately yes. representing things like that so yes I appreciate that so that's my push I want you to be objective I want you to be fair I want you to do do as much as you can in the time that you're there for because I think it's really critical right now this uh, we're you know our, our our parks like I said they're under threat of being privatized they're under threat of you know being uh, we're losing access to them yes ma'am and I sit in both worlds right now, so oh, yes, <laughs> that's why I have to stay neutral. <laughs> yes, but, but uh, yeah, on this board, you're representing the government of Guam, the people of Guam, so I hope that you can do that for yes, us. Yes, ma'am, that's the priority when I wear that hat. Thank you. So uh, also going through your application and uh, listening to your testimony, um, as Senator Trelahi mentioned, it's very impressive. Uh, one of the things I wanted to highlight here is that, uh, if I'm understanding it correctly, you're under a unit called Commando Warrior? Yes, ma'am. Yes, so it's really made me think, um, you know, we've got that nickname of Ladies Lature. I think uh, maybe 
Maybe we could switch that out for it being some sort of uh, commando ladies warrior <laughs> group. Um, uh, uh. Because uh, we women in the legislature were fighters uh, for our community, for our parks, and for our youth. And, you know, I think that provides us some opportunity. Well, there are many things with the experience that you bring in the background that you have that provide us some opportunity. And uh, maybe there's an ability to have the increased connection with uh, the military groups and the ways that they can be um, providing for the community and working with the community. And it also helps them integrate. Uh, that's one of the things that's really important that in their time here, I mean, obviously you sit in, in with both hats, you're part of our community already and you're serving. But uh, for those that may be less familiar with Guam and Guam's community, to make some real connections so that they have a real appreciation and they can really contribute while they're here. Well, you know, it's uh, funny that you brought that up because uh, I'm in a unit with at least 95% active duty personnel. So two to three years is their span here in Guam. And uh, I know during our lunchtime, they like to come over and pick our brain. So, you know, uh, these guys are always involved with community projects. But now that I'm, if I'm sitting here, I, I can expose that because they're in a small community themselves, but they, they always like to share out with their other friends and their colleagues. And once one person bites and actually steps out the gate, they, they, they're really impressed with what the island has to offer. So Joe's Masi for that. And um, I also noticed you have quite an extensive relationship with volleyball. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so I was uh, apparently a very mediocre player in, in high school, <laughs> but um, I think that volleyball is a very good sport. We had talked earlier with an earlier nominee about basketball, but volleyball is also something that has a long history in our community. And so um, it's good to see that there can be opportunities to see that as a sport and, and other sports. I'm, I'm sure you're not just focused on one, but that many of those kind of sports can be highlighted and, and built up further. Yes, yes. Um, I'm sure everybody that sits in here knows that um, back in the day when all the villages held those youth center recreation uh, competitions within the village. I mean, that was, that was one way that I, I grew up and it was very competitive. So uh, that's one of the things I'm hoping to kind of instill with Parks and Rec is that uh, we can take all these confederations and have them sponsor all the villages and, and plug in all their coaches. And it doesn't have to be a whole year, but if you put one coach from basketball, one coach from volleyball, you're here Saturday, then on to the next sport, and kind of like our little Guam uh, Olympics, and maybe within every one year, uh, within a year, we can have a, a showcase of an event. That way you get our, our federations, our, our clubs, to sponsor a village, and, and this is how we grow the sport, not just volleyball, but I'm talking across the board of all the sports. That sounds very good. Um, the more that we can do, as some of the police officers testified earlier, you know, part of the situation that we have, perhaps, is that our youth or our community uh, have too much idle time. And if we're building up these activities, then um, we're really providing a lot of positive things for them. They're developing things like uh, team building, uh, understanding about um, the uh, sports and, and uh, both the winning and the losing side of it, how to do that well, which provide for qualities in life. Um, and studies show that, you know, the more that uh, they're involved in these positive activities or mo the more that they're connected with the environment, that these experiences are really meaningful and yes, they can be really strong tools for for helping them have that strong sense of self and and choose paths that are not um, the other ones that may involve the, the temptation of uh, some of the drugs that are on our islands or other issues that we're struggling with right now so i think that your nomination comes as senator Trelahi was saying at a really good time 
that we can really build these up and really help our youth, but all of us in the community um, have these activities and have that stronger sense of self and community. Um, and then the other, one of the other traits that you bring with you is uh, your, your educational background. You have a doctorate in teaching and learning. And getting back to what I mentioned earlier in an earlier uh, nomination um, hearing is that a lot of what we're dealing with is behavioral. And so I think educator really has the ability to know how to reach out to. Now, you said you were teaching at Inarahan. Was it Inarahan? Middle school, uh, ma'am. Middle school? OK. Yes. So I actually went down there uh, in my junior high years. Uh, oh, OK. I guess maybe towards the end of it being a, a junior Transition, high. Transition, yeah. Yeah. But um, I, I think that really is something positive that you're bringing, because we need to figure out how to teach and get people to learn about how to interact with our parks in a positive way. Yes. I think most people are on board, but I think there are a few others, well, there definitely seem to be a few others that um, need to understand the benefits that it's bringing and, and how it's positive to keep our parks so that we can all use it well. Um, and it was really good to hear that not only the issues that both Senator Trelawney and I have brought up, but that you also recognize and have worked towards understanding that, you know, in the Pacific we're dealing with, uh, and probably nationwide and maybe even beyond that, we're dealing with obesity issues. Yes, we're dealing with high rates of diabetes, high rates of cancer. And so, as you rightly mentioned, all of those sports opportunities, even dance. So I, I was very interested to see you have a degree that involves dance. Oh, I kind of stuttered there on the dance. I didn't really want to say dance, but if we have to say dance, then. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yes, uh, I had to do cultural dance for and ballet and uh, all those other dances. Ooh, ballet. Yeah, ballet. They, well, that was Yoji's program, so okay, they so exposed I'm, us I'm, to all of that. I'm doing a bit of a visual <laughs> of, of you performing ballet, but you know, that, that is so important. I think that's another trait that you're bringing is that yes, it's sports, but it's also dance. And I think that all opens up opportunities. Uh, there are so many ways if people aren't feeling um, related to like connecting to sports, they may connect to dance. And, and yes. I do think that there are opportunities in our sports facilities that are, that are connected with the Department of Parks and Rec but also, we've seen a lot of activities that can happen in parks. And so it could be a win-win to connect with the environment and a sport or something like dance. So there could be things like a dancing or Zumba or yoga in the parks, but having it be something that's regular so that they're not only carrying out that activity and all of those positive benefits, but they're connecting with the environment and community resources and and all the positive benefits that can bring. Yes. Um, and it's very good to, to know that you have a background and some training in program development. It's wonderful to have these ideas, but somebody who can actually implement them, that's, that's, that's the really thing, important. Yes. yes, and so uh, your time in Fiji and elsewhere, I think is really uh, beneficial to us, so. Um, one of the ideas that uh, I will push, and then, and then you can see if it makes sense from, from your point of view, uh, it's based off of something Senator Trelahi had said, is I do think there's potential for parks, junior rangers, something like that. We could even have school clubs. I mean, we have school clubs for other things, but maybe some sort of, you know, parks, partners, uh, I, I'm sure somebody can come up with something much catchier, but, yes. but to get our youth to understand and care about our parks, I'm sure many of them do. Many of them maybe spend a lot of time at the skateboard park or at the beach already, and so uh, there may be that opportunity to utilize your ability to reach out to our island youth and uh, develop something like a parks clubs at the schools or as I mentioned before, junior park rangers, uh, having things 
that are just helping us reimagine some of the ways that we're interacting and connecting with our parks, movie nights or other things. I think a good partnership, and uh, maybe some of it exists already with the War in the Pacific Park, um, they've developed a lot of these sort of program activities. And you, with your programming background, I think that there could be very good collaboration between yourself and the Department of Parks and Rec and the War in the Pacific Park to really uh, just bolster all of those things for our community. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm sure uh, after we find out our uh, resources and previous programs, I'm, I'm sure we can connect that together and, and hopefully instill that programs that you guys are suggesting. So, Juice Maasi, and as I had mentioned at the earlier nomination hearing, um, do you, it, it, it does involve a, quite a commitment sometimes to be part of these boards. Quorum uh, has in the past been a difficulty, and so we want to be assured that when we're, we're considering nominees, that they have an understanding of the time commitment and a real commitment to that. So do you see yourself being committed to this and making sure that you're part yes, of making Yes, ma'am. As form? long as my wife says okay, then I can go. <laughs> but no, I, I, uh, yeah. I, again, it's just the uh, time management and uh, planning is what's going to be uh, successful to this uh, commission. So, you know, the availability of everybody else, I understand that the rest of the commission uh, does have a primary job, but I'm sure that we can all meet at a certain point where everybody's available. That's, that would, would work rather than just, I uh, think I can be there and all that. We have to set a, a certain day out of the month or, or quarter and assure that everybody will be there. That's very good to hear. Um, like I said, that commitment is really important to us. We want it to be a functioning board that's really uh, committed and able to uh, do its work. And then you're mentioning the support of your wife and family. Yes, ma'am. That's very important because, you know, each one of us, we're part of a family. And um, that, can, that can be part of what uh, is also a part of our time commitment. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. But the fact yes. that they go with you sometimes, they're part of these activities, um, I think that really, again, speaks to your ability to have a commitment and then to implement some of these programs where maybe in a way we're getting, uh, I'm not sure how large your family is, but maybe three or four for one yeah. <laughs> uh, in, in considering you as a, a nominee. So I want to say, Sidhuis Maasi, I think you bring a lot of potential. So Sidhuis Maasi for accepting the nomination or for uh, applying and then accepting the, the nomination. So. If there are no further <clears throat> comments and testimony, let me get back to the confirmation hearing of Dr. Michael Rabigal to serve as a member on the Board of Commissioners, Department of Parks and Recreation is uh, now moving to the next stage of continuing to receive testimonies over the next few days. Please address your written testimony to the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatnya Revitalization, Self-Determination, and Regional Affairs. Submit it via email to office.senatorkelly at guamlegislature.org or to my office located at the second floor of the Guam Congress building. So the time is now, we're right on track about 9.31. We will now begin the nomination hearing for Patricia L. Kreis. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rabago, for coming in this morning. Thank you, ma'am. Have a good day.
We will now begin the confirmation hearing uh, after a short <laughs> recess that we had of E. Magahaga's nominee Patricia L. Kreiss to serve as a member on the board of directors for the Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities Agency, otherwise known as CAHA. To restate the committee's general housekeeping rules, the conduct of this public hearing shall be as follows. Those testifying will be recognized in the order of those that have signed in. Written testimony may be read. Lengthy written testimony should be summarized to about five minutes. Written testimonies shall be submitted to the committee. Please provide our legislative staff with your written testimony <clears throat> for photocopying. Testimony shall be confined to the substance. Persons will be allowed to provide oral testimony only once. Once you are done, please remain at the table so that the members of the panel are able to request for additional comments or convey comments on your testimony. When you speak, please make sure that the microphone is on and that you speak into the microphone. Please state your name for the, rec uh, the record. <clears throat> uh, boy, um, oh, sorry. Um, and so looking at um, who has signed up, we have uh, Patricia Kreis, who has, uh, is ready to be seated, uh, excuse me, uh, ready to provide testimony. Um, we have uh, Dr. Kreis, who is here in support. And we have uh, Miss Jackie Balbus, <clears throat> who is the acting head of uh, CAHA. And so we'll go ahead and ask those that are gonna be providing testimony to go ahead and sit at the table. And then Mrs. Christ will have you testify last. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start with uh, the acting head of CAHA and um, uh, Dr. Christ. So very good. Um, since Dr. Kreiss uh, signed in as the second person, if we can go ahead and have you begin with your testimony. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just here as president of the University of Guam, uh, as well as husband of the nominee, uh, just wanting to say how important I think CAHA is to um, all aspects of, um, of the university's mission, as well as um, uh, all of the interests of uh, culture and arts and humanities in Guam and in the wider region as well. So um, I think in many ways, CAHA is an example for the whole region for how to manage our arts and humanities activities. And I just wanted to say that, um, uh, that I, I, I think that, um, uh, that Patty Kreiss's um, experience in, in these fields as well as, uh, as an active member of a number of different communities uh, is very good for um, uh, bringing kind of a, uh, a public view to uh, arts and humanities programming and thinking about ways to support it better um, with interactions with organizations like the University of Guam. So I'm very much in support. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sidious so Masi for that testimony, and you bring up uh, very good points about us being situated within a wider region. And so that is something I think that uh, CAHA has done well over the years, but can continue to build on. So Sidious so Masi for bringing some of those points uh, to the forefront. And then we'll also hear from uh, the acting head of CAHA, uh, Ms. Babas. Manana and Sizuas, Madam Chair, thank you for the opportunity to um, sit before you in support of Mrs. Christ's uh, nomination to the CAHA board. Um, although I don't know Mrs. Christ, I, I know that since the short time that she's been in Guam, she's immersed herself into the community. Um, I know that she's a member of the Guam Symphony Society, which CAHA has supported for many, many years. And um, what I really wanted to say is with her business background and the fact that she's um, traveled quite extensively, I think she can bring uh, something new to the CAHA board. 
Uh, I would like to see maybe initiatives um, that would support the artists, maybe some sort of cottage industry, or maybe a way to give them more training and education to give them, um, to help make their art form a livelihood. Because many times artisans are only focused on the creative aspect of, of their art, and they don't not necessarily have the time or the desire to put all the effort into making it a profitable business. So I think with Mrs. Christ's um, experience, and like I said, she's gonna bring a totally new perspective to the Kaha board. I'm here in support of her nomination. Thank you. Suzuis Maasi for that. And now let's go ahead and listen to the nominee herself. Thank you, Jackie and Tom. Buenos and half a day, Madam Chair. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and read my testimony. I'm honored and humbled to be considered to serve on the Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities Board of Directors. My application provided a brief summary of my work in volunteer service for the past three decades. In January of this year, I retired after 28 years with Ford Motor Company and our financial services division, Ford Motor Credit. As a CAHA board member, I hope to share my marketing and financial expertise, as well as a consumer's interest in the arts and humanities. For the past 20 years, I've been fortunate enough to attend and participate in many higher education arts and humanities events. I have seen firsthand the impact arts and humanities can have on an individual and an organization. I hope as a board member, I can assist in preserving, advocating, and promoting the arts and humanities in Guam. I look forward to collaborating with fellow board members and giving back to this island we all love. I respectfully submit this testimony to the committee. Sitos Masi. Sitos Masi for that. And um, I do want to mention, I meant, I meant to mention it when uh, Dr. Christ was providing his testimony that uh, we very much appreciate the University of Guam's working with the Department of Parks and Recreation, which we had two earlier nomination hearings for uh, board members. But we appreciate the University of Guam um, being very supportive of, of the idea of adopting a park, and we're still in communication about that. So thank you very much uh, for that. And then uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Christ, for your testimony as well. So with the different testimonies and with looking at your background, um, I think people have highlighted very well, yourself included, that you bring a lot of potential to the table, that um, you have these uh, skills in marketing and finance, and very much part of what Kaha does is um, needing to support the arts, needing to support the artists, and um, help showcase them in a variety of ways, both for themselves as artists, for us as the greater community, and then as you mentioned, um, us as consumers of art as well. And so I think if we're looking at all of those aspects, which some of your background can help us do, I think that's a very uh, positive benefit that you can be bringing. Um, and some of what stood out to me in, in this mentioning of you having traveled quite a bit. Um, also being a person who enjoys traveling and getting to experience other places and other cultures and environments, um, I think that that is something that's very beneficial. And one of the things that's just more recently come to mind with some of these thoughts uh, for Kaha is maybe there's a potential to have more art in our public spaces. We've been seeing these wonderful murals going out, but as we go through many parts of our region and elsewhere, art is really out there in the public spaces. Uh, sculpture, having exhibits, now it's a little trickier for us to have exhibits out in the open and at night, uh, but you know we can, we can figure out ways to make it work and, and make sure everything is uh, safeguarded as well. But um, I, I think there's a lot of potential in that. And, maybe with that marketing background, you can be thinking about some of those ways that's getting the art out there for the community to really be inspired by and appreciate 
uh, in, in all sorts of places and ways that we haven't done before. There's always room for growth. So that could be something exciting. And as um, Ms. Balbus mentioned, the, the potential for continuing to build up our cottage industry of our local artists as entrepreneurs, that is something that is so important for us as a community to have that available. But then also as we're looking to diversify the economy, they really bring a lot of potential with them. Things that visitors are seeking when they come here, our tourists, our visitor industry is one of our largest industries. So if we're really continuing to build that up in ways that make sense for them, uh, I think that provides a lot of potential for us. And then it's money that's in our economy that stays and circulates amongst us because it's at that real grassroots level. So I'm sure you understand that much more than I having that finance background. But uh, that could be, again, another really positive benefit that you're bringing along with us, uh, you're bringing to us, excuse me. Um, and as Dr. Kreis mentioned, us being part of this region, I think that there is definitely potential for us to be continuing to build up in the ways that we connect with cultural entities in other islands. Um, and because we have community members from those different islands and Kaha is here, it's here to uh, showcase and support Chamorro artists, but also all artists and members of the community. And so there may be a potential in continuing to build up the very fine set of programs that they have running already. Uh, again, there's always room for continued refinement and, and growth in those areas. Did you yourself have some particular focus that you're interested in? Well, I really uh, think that uh, the points you made were excellent in terms of the, this cottage industry and really promoting the artists we have on the, the island. Uh, I've had a chance to do a couple of events here locally uh, when Rick Castro opened up his uh, new display exhibit space uh, you know they had a nice reception and a, a lot of people coming and and actually most of the art had already been sold in the first couple of hours he'd been open so I think there's this demand for local art not just from people who live in Guam but I think uh, all of our visitors as you mentioned if there's a way to display uh, in more public spaces I think that would be that would be great. So I, I think that's an opportunity uh, that we could help market um, and would look forward to collaborating with the board members in doing. Uh, there's just so much rich cultural heritage here that we need to share uh, all over, not just in Guam, but all over the region as well. Uh, and I just think there's so many opportunities. Uh, probably about uh, a month ago, we went to a Yoji book launch that was uh, 13 months in Maleso. It was a children's book, uh, and there are two great local artists, uh, the woman who wrote the book and then the illustrator, uh, uh, also a woman from Guam, and, and she had her uh, prints on display. And it was just a fantastic community event. There must have been probably 25 or 30 kids with parents and grandparents uh, and I just think doing more of that and, and just getting that out into the community and getting uh, young people involved. I think, like you said, there's just so much more that can be done. There's so much potential. And I think brainstorming and talking about it uh, with the community, I think there's a lot we can do. Suzu Masi for that. And you bring forward many good points. Um, I unfortunately missed the opening of that exhibit and um, I'm very saddened by it, but uh, I still have the goal of getting down there, although apparently maybe now many of <laughs> the pieces of art uh, may not be there uh, since it was so successful. And recognizing the rich cultural heritage that is here, uh, we're constantly looking for ways to showcase that. It does many wonderful things uh, for us to remember that we're in an indigenous homeland, that there are 4,000 years of history and culture to be showcasing historic sites, cultural sites, but 
um, all of the traditions that have been part of that culture for a long time as well. And um, just the diversity, some of what you spoke to of what we have available to us and, and that will continue to grow and expand. Where maybe people think of arts in a very narrow way, maybe they're thinking about uh, the murals, the paintings, and so forth. But as you mentioned, you know, these children's books that are coming out, the art that is accompanying them, um, those are also forms of art. You know, they're literary arts. Um, we have performing artists. And so I think the more that we're continuing to recognize that as a community and the more that we have board members and an acting director that understand those things, the more that we're all going to benefit from it. And it does. It makes all of our lives richer, which is the, the whole point of what arts is supposed to be doing for us. It's making our lives richer. It's providing us this stronger self, sense of self. And then, as I, I had mentioned in one of the earlier uh, nomination hearings, that stronger sense of self, you know, it, it may seem like something that's not very important, but it's, it's one of the most important things for dealing with some of our social issues. I mean, we can tackle certain things like our social issues or even some of uh, the crime that we're, we're dealing with now uh, through, through the arts and through providing that sense of self, through providing opportunities, as you mentioned, to our youth or others to get involved in the arts. Um, those are some of the strongest tools that we have for helping them pick these positive paths because they have that rootedness in who they are and where they are. So um, the, some of the things that you mentioned are very exciting, I think, and um, just uh, speak to that continued growth of Kaha, which as a community we want to support and also see in, the, in those variety of ways. Uh, do you see that there might be any potential conflicts by serving on the board? I don't foresee any. It, certainly if something came up, I would uh, re recuse myself from any decision if there was a conflict. Um, I don't foresee any. Jackie might know a little bit better uh, with all of her experience, but I would certainly back out of something if there was a conflict. So just Masi for that. Uh, it's important to know that the board members are cognizant that there might be conflicts that come up and um, how to respond if, if that indeed is the case. And then another thing that's really important with our board members and that uh, the members of the legislature, uh, it's really important for them to hear, is that you understand the time commitment and how important it is for us to be able to have a board that does meet regularly and does make quorum and then therefore is able to do its work. Some of what this board has is, uh, well, they have a lot, of, uh, a lot of work involved. They're part of the Festival of Pacific Arts. They're part of the art programs. They're part of understanding our region and how to build up our artists, but also uh, our community. Um, but then also they do things like um, they, they uh, approve of, or as uh, Senator Terlahi said earlier, um, hire the, the um, president of the Department of Tomorrow Affairs, or uh, maybe in this case, um, I'm, in my mind I'm having to separate, now that they've been separated out, uh, uh, maybe I'm getting that confused. But anyway, the, the board have a lot of responsibilities. So all that being said, I've taken the very long way to, to ask you about your understanding the time commitments and uh, the importance of making quorum and whether you feel like you can make those commitments. Uh, yes, and I'm looking forward to becoming even more engaged in the community. So uh, uh, I don't foresee any problems meeting the, the commitment that comes with this important role. So do this, Malasi, and I'm, I'm so, so glad that uh, your answer was much more, uh, much more uh, straightforward than my very long-winded roundabout way of getting to the, the question that I meant to ask. So with that, um, 
I don't believe that there are any other testimonies or statements uh, that anybody wanted to make. I, I believe there was a written testimony that was submitted. I don't know if we received that. If not, I'll, I'll drop it off when I leave. Uh, from uh, Gillette Leon Guerrero. Oh, yes, that's true. And um, I'm glad that you mentioned that. I did read through her testimony. And again, for those that will be reading through the committee report, it's important to note that uh, Gillette Leon Guerrero, who, was, uh, who has been part of uh, these sort of realms of our community for a very long time, for decades. Uh, she provides her support. Uh, she also highlights your marketing and finance background, um, that you are very interested and committed to giving back to the community that you are part of and issues like that. So um, we're, we're very pleased to receive her testimony, her long standing in the community, and her support of you means a lot to us. So, with that being said, um, I just want to remind people that we will be continuing to receive testimonies over the next few days. To please address your written testimony to the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Saganya Revitalization, Self-Determination and Regional Affairs, and submit it via email to office.senatorkelly at guamlegislature.org or to my office located at the second floor of the Guam building. So this will conclude the confirmation hearing of Patricia L. Christ to serve as a member on the board of directors, Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities Agency, otherwise known as CAHA. Sudhuas so Maasi for your attendance this morning and for your participation in today's confirmation hearings. Today's public hearing has now ended and I am uh, quite pleased to say that we have stayed on track all morning. The time is now 9.59. Have a good day.